The odometer for the K1500 hasn't worked since I've owned it. So today, I'm going to try and fix it. I have never really shown the interior of the truck. So this is your first look at it. As you can see, as with many trucks of this vintage, it's been used, seats torn, um, it's pretty intact, just dirty and weathered. But today I'm gonna to focus on the instrument cluster. The odometer doesn't work, so I'm going to take it out and hopefully use the one I got from the junkyard to make a working odometer. As you can see, I have some trim pieces that have seen better days, but that is cosmetic. So I'm going to try my best to get everything functioning and then address the cosmetic issues. These, these screws aren't even doing much. If you can see down here, I mean, it's just, just kind of ragged. It's been that way since I've got it, but again, I've had more pressing mechanical issues to deal with. So that's been on the back burner. The task now is to remove the trim so that I can take out the instrument cluster. Just removing the Torx bit, the Torx head screws that are on the corners. One here, 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 and there's supposed to be one here, but it is not. Once the screws are removed, the only thing holding this panel in are a few fasteners. And I tried to be gentle because this truck is old and the plastic is brittle, but at this point, I could just pull it out. If this panel on your truck is intact, you have to also remove the headlight switches that are on the left, but mine's not, they're just floating so I didn't have to worry about it. I will address this in another video. The cluster's held in with a screw there, a screw just in there, one there, and then one that lives back up in there. To access the screws that are holding in the upper part of the cluster, I removed an HVAC duct that was on the left side of the cluster and a little pocket that is above the controls on the right side of the cluster. At this point, the cluster is almost free. There's a cable that goes from the gear indicator on the cluster to where the shift lever attaches to the steering column that cable needs to be disconnected. It can be accessed by removing this panel that is directly below the steering column. Once the cover's off, you can see where the clip on the end of the cable is attached. And then it's really easy to just push it off. But note its position. You can use the marks it left to reposition it, or you can use its position relative to other things, like this bolt. Now the cluster isn't attached to anything. I put the key in the ignition and turned it to the run position so that I could move the shift lever to give me more space to take it out. Let's see what's wrong with it. The cluster on the right is the one I took out of my truck. The one on the left is the one I got from the junkyard. I'm gonna take the one on the left apart first to see if there's any obvious signs that it doesn't work. For all I know, it may be broken as well. The front of the cluster is easy to disassemble. There's only four screws that hold it on. One of the things that I like about working on old cars is how analog they are. Once you open it up, you can see exactly how it works. There's a motor that turns a gear that is connected to the odometer and there is a coupling between the odometer and the trip meter. There's a lot more that goes on, but I like starting with the simple stuff. I looked over the one from the junkyard, and at first glance, all the obvious components seem to be present and intact. So now, I'm gonna take mine apart to see if there are any obvious differences. Oh. 
I don't see any glaring differences, but what I did notice on mine was that that gear is slightly misplaced, displaced. You see how the white and the black gear made up properly on this one. For, for whatever reason, that gear has slid out on mine. And let me see if I can rotate the other gear. So if I rotate that gear, the odometer gear seems to be spinning on the shaft. It looks like it rotates my gear, but that rotation does not result in the odometer spinning. That could be the only problem I have. If you look closely, there's a crack in that gear right there. So maybe that's all I need to do. So luckily, I have another gear in this one. So let's see if that fixes it. The odometer gears are surprisingly easy to swap out. All I had to do was pry the odometer shaft on the side of the gear out of the plastic using a small screwdriver. Once the shaft is free, there's enough play to remove the gear. I also removed the bracket above the coupling between the odometer and the trip meter. I did not need to do that. When I got the other gear off, it was cracked too. I was a bit disappointed, but it was in better shape than the gear on mine, so I could at least throw it in to see if it solved the problem. So that's what I did, and it worked. It was cool to see the odometer spin, but that is just a temporary fix. I need to go ahead and order the new gear. I've seen them online for between 35 and 50 bucks. I'm going to go ahead and order it, and in a few days, I'll throw the new one on. I have a lot more planned for this truck, and if you would like to keep up with all the things I do on my K1500, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care.